Good. Good morning, Mary Elizabeth Wakefield. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this interview with me. Um, my name is Dr. East for anybody that's listening. And the reason and the intention behind this interview podcast is to share this woman's gifts with the world. You may uh, be familiar with the work of Mary Elizabeth Wakefield. I know I am. And I know that the various times that I have collaborated with Mary Elizabeth and Michelangelo, mm. I've been so inspired that I thought I can't keep this juiciness all to myself. So the intention <laughs> here is to share some insights, some experience from Mary Elizabeth's journey mm. in traditional Chinese medicine, Chinese mm -hmm. medicine, vibrational medicine, mm -hmm. share what she's done. So maybe you can learn from that uh, and also what she's up to and just kind of share this delightful um, energy and spirit with the world. Welcome, Mary Elizabeth Wakefield. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are we? Uh, the, I want to take you way back. I think, you know, we talked a little bit before we hit record button, but mm -hmm. I'd love to start. I always am fascinated at the, at what brings people into Chinese medicine. I know my own ah. story and I wrote about it in my book uh, called mm. More Than a Treatment, what brought me mm. to Chinese medicine, but I'd love to hear from you, what drew you to this medicine? Where were you and what was the whole circumstances around that? Uh, that's a good question. And I would love to read your book, by the way. Um, uh, what, what, uh, first of all, I just wanted to say that I always have been a musician and a flutist and an opera singer. And I've sung operas all over the world. But in 1980, I was uh, living in Tokyo for three years. I was an, obviously an expat and I uh, never expected, you know, I, I suddenly, uh, while I was there, I'd never had an acupuncture treatment my whole life. I met a Japanese acupuncture. He came into my home where, where all the expats live in, uh, in Tokyo, uh, a beautiful area. And he gave me a treatment and uh, blew me out of the water. And I said, oh my God, what I want to do when I go back, whenever that is, because I was in Tokyo for three years, I'm going to go back and I'm going to find an acupuncture school and I'm going to stutter, st stutter. I'm going to stutter. <laughs> I'm going to I vary that too. I am going to learn uh, acupuncture. I was looking for Japanese, but I also got, uh, got uh, Chinese medicine. Uh, and of course, I... I promised myself that I'd return that 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 go go to school when I got back, and that's the first thing I did when I got back from Tokyo to learn Chinese and Japanese acupuncture because I did go to Tri-State, which is defunct now, but they had mm -hmm. Kiko there, and Kiko ah. was amazing, and also we had Chinese practitioners, Ni Tian Ni, who is now deceased, was there, and and some amazing people. So uh, I learned both Chinese and and uh, Japanese and a bit of Vietnamese, which was interesting. So, uh, so I really was very blessed to be able to find the school I wanted to go to. Um, I just wanted to say as, as a little background, as a child, I had terrible asthma and almost died when I was about five years old. But the singing and the joy of the singing opened up the lungs. I'd hear music and I'd dance and <gasps> wheeze and sing until finally, the lungs started to open up and the joy came uh, fulfilling my, my, filling my lungs. It was, it was really a, an intense time. And then uh, another thing we're talking about this uh, drew me to the medicine is this. My father died at the age of 53. Uh, they took him to the hospital and he died immediately as a heart attack. But I, as a young girl, about 14, I said, I am going to get to the bottom of this. I'm going to find out what really caused this. What did this, because he was fine before, what really caused this? So when I was in acupuncture school, many years later, I learned about, and I'm sure you know this, the syndrome called Shuli, X-U-L-I syndrome. And that has to do with the heat rising up from the, from the stomach. And what it does is it causes uh, the heart to have a heart attack. So I'm sure you know that. And I said, my God, and I had to go to acupuncture school to find out what is this? As a young girl, I want to get to the bottom of this. And I thought, yeah, that's what happened. That's bam, he was gone for, and it was, it was tough, but 
later I learned and I said, okay, okay, this medicine is really amazing. This medicine is magical. And uh, so I followed that, that journey and, uh, and I don't regret it at all. You know, I really, really feel so grateful and I learned so much. And I watch the people here now running to Western medicine and I, and sometimes that's the right thing to do. But in this case, with what's going on, Chinese medicine and the herbs and the work with the acupuncture, work with the work with the um, the beauty, with the love, with the joy, has been a, a godsend for my patients and for myself. And I, I, every day I say thank you. I feel so so honored to be in this medicine at this point in time. So, in that journey, um, Mary Elizabeth, you took a turn towards facial rejuvenation and cosmetic yes, acupuncture. That's when I, I was did. first introduced yeah. to your work in the late 90s, early 2000s right. is when I came into your work and your very yep. first book is on Chinese medicine in cosmetic mm -hmm. acupuncture. How did that happen? How did you take uh, that turn? I was, uh, I remember I said I was an opera singer and I was singing uh uh, with an opera company, uh, oh God, where was it? Uh, some part in the United States, and and uh, I uh, there was a uh, I was doing the Rosenkavalier by Strauss. I was the 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 Marshallin, uh, if you know opera at all. But my one of the the men who was oh, very overweight, he was kind of the clown, etc. And he um, fell down and couldn't breathe, and they had to carry him off the stage, and nobody knew what was wrong with him. And so uh, I said, look, this, this is, this is um, heart failure and this is what's happening and he can't breathe and there's water on the lungs. Uh, Michelangelo, Michael and I were together at that time. That's where I met him. We took him to the hospital. We got him treated immediately and he survived. Wow. So, uh, and, and in doing that, I thought, wow, wouldn't it be interesting? And also being an artist and being you know, uh, a performer at that time. Uh, why, why don't we bring that in? The face is so important. You know, the face, the right and left sides of the face, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, how people perceive you, how you express yourself. I thought, you know, that it's very important to look into how to work with the energy of the face, the neck and the head, um, and not only the constitution. So I started creating facial acupuncture that was based upon muscles uh, mm -hmm. also with the constitution. So we had the uh, obviously tri-state trigger and, and motor point, but I didn't have uh, a way, I didn't know what to do with that. So I, I, I tested it on myself, you know, <laughs> I need some more testing actually uh, for myself at this point. But then I said, okay, let's write a book, you know? And so that's, that's how it all happened. So, uh, uh, I, you know, that's how it happened with the facial acupuncture, because I was in the theater at that time, and we were looking at the faces, people, looking at my own face, look at this poor man, he couldn't breathe, and what was happening with his entire being and his face, and how we saved his life, and uh, that, I said, wow, Chinese medicine, okay. Powerful. Powerful. You know, you... You have your book right there, your very first book. Yeah. Can you hold that up? Um, yeah. You already told me the story, but I'd love to share your story of writing your first book because many people listening may be at that same place in their life where yeah. a book wants to come through them. And mm -hmm. you and I both are authors, so we know what that feels like, like a book yes. wanting to be birthed through you and you not knowing yeah. what to do with it. Yeah. You shared with me earlier that somebody said to you once, um, hey, Mary Elizabeth, do you want to write a book? And you said, no. And look at you, you now have two. So <laughs> yeah. can you share a little bit about that book writing process, how that book found you, came through you, and now you're even thinking about a new book as we yeah. speak. So can well, you share first, a little bit about that? Sure. The first thing, first book, sorry, uh, that I had, uh, uh, the Constitution of Facial Acupuncture was just I've got to get this out of there and out. And you, you see that there's a whole protocol based on the muscle structure, as well as the body, as well as the, the five elements, as everything, the right and left sides of the face. Uh, and uh, a lot of that was uh, 
uh, in doing that book. By the way, I looked at the beginning of that first book, Constitutional Facial Acupuncture, and Lillian Bridges had written the foreword. Oh. Our dear beloved. I love Lillian. her. And I, I love her too. I still think of her. And she there she was. I said, oh, Lillian, in life and death and 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 in on, on the other plane, you're here. Yep. I just yep. this morning I looked at that and I felt very blessed. Very blessed. I'm very blessed to be here talking to you. So uh right now. So the yeah. So how did I start that? That's how it started. And I well, just you decided. told me that you were at a conference and somebody said to you, Would you ever want to write a book? And you said no. And then you thought, well, Oh, maybe. yes, it was Peacock. Right. It was Peacock. <laughs> I was sitting outside in San Diego when the woman was looking, looking for me. And uh, she is part of Elsevier UK. And she said, a uh, dark hair, lovely woman. And she's still around. And she said, would you like to write a book? And I said, heck no, at that point. And then I came back from the, the PECOM symposium in San Diego. And I thought, you know what? She gave me her card. She said, get a hold of me if you change your mind. And so I changed my mind. I said, I, I need to do this. It feels important. It's, it's not, it, it's about, it's about healthy aging. It's about beauty, but it's also, it's also the spirit because the face radiates, as you know, very well, the, um, the essence of who the person is yeah. and, uh, and the shen and, and the lines and where they, where they are. I mean, uh, how people express themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so important, uh, including the whole rest of the body, but I'm just saying it's a, a very important part of the being. And also it's a, it is wonderful for self-esteem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very much so. Very and much. Very much self-esteem. People are really, and right now, especially right now, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you are rocking with all these patients, yeah. including uh, all mainly women, but also men who come mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. and they need help and uh, they're not quite as worried about it. But uh, it was, uh, yeah, I think it's very important. This is, this is, as you said, this is a great journey yeah. and it's a great gift. And I feel yeah. very grateful to be speaking with you about this. And, yeah. Uh, speaking, speaking of speaking. Too. So, yes. so the, okay. the, authoring <laughs> part, the, the authoring part of it is I'd love to, you know, and you just did it perfectly share with people that if you even have an inkling of wanting to share your information, expertise, knowledge, experience yeah. with the world, please just do it. All yeah. the authors I've ever met, including yeah. you now have said that wasn't really my plan. You know, none of us are born like I want to write a book, but a book wants to come through you. It will find a way to come it's, through you. It's a birthing process. It's it a is birthing, a birthing process. Isn't it? So just Never. do it. Okay. Yeah. Just do it. Hire a publisher. Do it yourself. There's a, a variety of publishers out there. So don't wait any longer. So That's right. let's leave that there for people to kind of ponder <laughs> and plant that seed with people. Let's talk about your speaking because I have seen you speak. You're an amazing speaker. You have you have lectured and spoke around the world. So Good can time. you go back and share how that began? I'm sure there was a time where somebody said, would you like to speak? And you're like, uh, oh, yeah. maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What was it, your question? I, which I thought was great too. What was my journey? Has it, yeah. what, how is my, what, how has my journey been like? What, what it's been like? And so I wrote a few things down. Uh, it's been a great journey. It's a fabulous journey. And after graduating from acupuncture school, I decided to go out to where San Francisco to the they're no longer there, but ACTCM. I'm going to go there and teach in, in California. I'm, I'm done. I'm going to take what I know here. I'm going to go there. And that blew them away. They, mm -hmm. they were used to mainly, uh, they weren't used to the kind of unusual uh, facial uh, needlings, et cetera, and working uh, with uh, the eight extraordinary. Uh, they they weren't, weren't very uh, good at knowing about the eight extraordinary work. Meridians, which is very, very, very important. I learned that at uh, Tri-State. I must say it was a bit different. And understanding how to lift and tone, working with people. One woman had Bell's palsy forever. We were able to release that. I mean, it was 
amazing. So um, they're no longer there, but they were there then. So I, I was working on treating the face. And of course, as well as the constitution, the body at that time, people were just sticking needles in the face. Mm -hmm. They weren't working. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah but oh. it's not as effective as if you work on the body as no. a whole, as you know. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So my uh, and I taught there and then uh, it was a big success. And, and then the reputation started to grow. So I ended up in, you know, uh, educator of the year, the triple AOM, which is no longer. And there's a reason why I did that, because somebody called me up one day. Would you love this? And I'm sure you know this. Uh, they called me up and then she was a, a, a woman from uh, New York. So she said, do you want to go to California and create a diamond acupuncture facial? I said, what? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm telling you. Do, 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 do you want do you want to do that? And I said, well, how would I do that? Well, <laughs> do something with the face and use diamonds. Wow. And she said, figure it out. Let me know when you figured it out. So. I called up my jeweler who had made me quite a few things. And I said, how in the heck do we do this? It has to be on a needle that goes into the skin with a diamond. How do we do it? He said, look, I'll help you with this. Show, send the, of course, it would be a metal handle. Send mm -hmm. that uh, the needles to me. And uh, I will create like an earring. It's like an mm -hmm. earring with gold in gold with it mm -hmm. opening to go over that and you you've got the big uh, the idea oh, i have so, those i have i use okay. those in practice oh, good. Yeah, i love oh, those good. oh yeah oh good oh, yeah. good good so that's what happened i created the diamond acupuncture facial we were in the hollywood mansions it was a lot of fun um and i had one of my uh, acu uh acupuncturists from uh la come and help me and uh yeah so i use that in particular i found and you probably know this the yin tang, you know, the, the middle line there, which is which is internalized angst in a way. Two, two lines in the a brow has to do with externalized anger. This is anger within. Women going through menopause, having problems with the, with the of course, it goes right into the, I think the pineal gland, I, I could be wrong. Yeah. But we, we use that with these women going through uh, angst and, and uh, menopause and all sorts of problems. And uh, even a few men came and it made a huge difference. So I'm, I thought, okay, that's interesting. And uh, it was, uh, it was a great journey. And then they, they cable filmed, uh, they filmed the diamond facial and it was seen all over the world. Uh, Demi Moore was standing there, the actress, I don't know if she's still with us and watching the model. People Magazine picked it up, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it was, yeah, I, mean, I just thought, well, it's it's the diamond, I know, because we're carbon as humans, and the diamond is pure, almost pure carbon, and so are we. So it mirrors the carbon in the uh, in, in the body with the, the reflection of the diamond and the beauty of a person. So I do you do do you do that all over your I do you work with them all over your body or that just the face with the diamond? Well, I'm a I'm a huge rock hound. So, but I remember. <laughs> Um, I, there I was another that. company. So I remember your diamond facial and I just, mm -hmm. this is exactly one of the reasons why I wanted you to share this story because uh -huh. what a legacy you've created in our profession and worldwide, really your reach has been worldwide. It's just so profound. You. You're so humble about it. Uh, there was, another I like company. to travel. I like to travel I know. <laughs> uh, lately. It's been uh, bad probably. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. There was another company, I'm forgetting the name of it, you probably remember, but they would have the little gemstones that were on a spring that went over the needles. They were called... Um, yeah, I have them. I have yes. them. Yes. I'll look right. it up and tell you. Yeah, and, mini and, something. Right, right. I and have. then they had a and, face mask. So th yes. this is a perfect segue into the subtle energies of right. gemstones, diamonds. And so it sounds like that's how you started to dive more into the not metaphysical, but the subtle energies of the body and recognizing that beauty yeah. does come from within. You've already, yes. you've always treated from that vantage point in the sense that you incorporated constitutional with local for cosmetic mm -hmm. and anti aging. Mm -hmm. When and where and how did you start to take 
take another turn towards vibrational medicine and energy medicine, uh -huh. which is your second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me, uh, yeah, I'll tell you that. I just want to tell you that uh, after that, and I'll get to that vibrational because we have so much time, but I remember traveling then after that. And I, in 2008, China and Japan symposiums, uh, Australia, New Zealand, everywhere, international symposium, Rotenberg auf der Taube in Germany, uh, that at that time, Canada, Vancouver, and then San Diego, of course, and uh, all the Berkeley, the FSOMA, which we're doing now in Florida. Love to have you join me. We have a good time. Uh, Northwestern Minnesota, Pecan, Bastyr, blah, 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 Yosan, blah, blah, blah. That happened, Mont Montreal, Montreal. So it all, it all happened. So how you, the question, I wanted to tell you, I, I think I told you with the diamond, I'm, I'm circling back. I got excited about the diamond. So I decided to create five element gems for the face. You, you, you mm -hmm. have those too? I don't element. have those, but ah, yeah, but I've yeah. used them and played with them. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're fun. So the five element are really are using it, not only in the face, but the entire body. And it really made a big difference depending upon what was happening uh, facially and constitutionally with the patient. Um, it was really, a, I still have that, you know, but. Do you uh, still sell those, Mary Elizabeth? Do you still I, sell those I can. systems? I, I can, I have to get a hold of the jeweler and find him. Okay, okay. Yeah, but if you're, if you're welcome, you're welcome to that if I can find them. Okay. No problem. But it, it is, uh, you were talking about, um, uh, so that uh, Constitution of Facial Acupuncture, high, highly recommended that. And then we're looking at, you said vibrational, you wanted to talk well, about Well, at that. some point, it sounds like you've always had a foot in the mystic, in the esoteric, the metaphysical, in in the subtle energy. It feels like you've always had yes. that kind of foot. And yes. Chinese medicine introduces us to that realm already. Yes. At some point, you're lecturing, which has been all of the world. I just want everybody to recognize that you have literally been all of the world sharing this medicine in your knowledge and expertise with everybody. At some point, you shifted from facial rejuvenation and cosmetics into vibrational medicine, which is your 2020 book. Right. And now most of your lecturing is on vibrational medicine, tuning forks and subtle energy. So when did yeah. that, when did that shift occur for you well, in your journey? It was always there, uh, East. Um, I've always been, uh, I was part of a, a new monastic way and not necessarily, uh, uh, religious, but it, it, we would do uh, a wonderful teacher all, all my life. And we would do meditation. We'd be learning how to, how to, how to work with the subtle energy, how to see it, how to know it, how to feel it above you. How do you feel it in your body? Uh, that was many, many seven, eight years of training before I even became an acupuncturist or did any of this. And, uh, amazing, amazing teacher. She's still around. Uh, out in California, uh, but it is no, 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 no. She's she's in Colorado, uh, but uh, it was a, a a great journey. And so I I said, why not? We know the Acutonics people with all their all their tuning forks. And I was one of the people that said to them very quickly, I want to do something with vibrational acupuncture, and I I would really like to have tuning forks ohm forks that screw and unscrew so that we could put gems on the forks. So I have that and we created that together. It's their property, mm -hmm. but they have this amazing, I will take a picture and send it to you because it's quite something you could take it off and on and you can work with citrine. You've got, uh, you've got uh, amethyst, you've got all sorts of beautiful gems that we use that to do the three treasures. So you're starting mm -hmm. with the crown, Herkimer diamond, diamond at the crown, mm -hmm. the, the real deal that is going down to the bottom of the feet where you gain, uh, ground the person kidney one. So I said, wow, this really is va va boom. This is incredible. <laughs> and this is amazing. So we met them in 2000, 2003, I think. And, and we started our alliance with that. And I said, look, 
let's integrate needles and tuning forks and sound because they ha all have vibration and connection. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. when we created this vibrational acupuncture, which just came out in 2020, as you said. And, uh, and then I started work, working with the right and left brains with, I'm sure you worked with, but with sound as well. And, uh, and uh, it's, it's a beautiful book with all the products in it, et cetera. It gives you, gives you ways of working with sound and needles that, and vibration that uh, va, va, boom, a lot of people don't know about. We've had people this last year in, uh, in Germany see this book through the uh, PCOM symposium and also in Belgium. And they said, oh my God, can you come? And it was during the time that you really couldn't travel at that point healthily. And I said, I can't do that right now. You know, about when they were open, which are getting fairly open, we'll try again. But they mm -hmm. wanted this. They said, we have never seen anything like this. So um, vibration is, is very, very important. So we, Michelangelo, my partner and I actually both wrote the, this book. And, um, and uh, I tell you, vibration and needles works very well. And then if you add those gems on top of the needle, you can use the forks around the base of the needle or along the side. It's very interesting. Or you can just use that with the needle and you, don't, you can use the forks doing something else. So I thought there has got to be more freedom in treatment, depending mm -hmm. upon yourself, your patient and who you're working with and what their psycho-spiritual needs are. I mean, obviously the body and grounding the body is the first thing, but what I see now people are, and of course these spirit points across the chest are amazing, but um, you can use the, the, the um, diamonds and the, uh, you can use the, uh, you can use the gems on the end, ends of the forks to work on the chest and work with psycho-spiritual issues. Uh, and I know you do the whole gamut, but I'm, I'm ha a happy clam. And luckily I have somebody who takes care of me <laughs> like you too. So I'm <laughs> good. And everybody that comes here is healthy or they've lost somebody psycho-spiritually, mainly women. Yeah. Mainly women. I, have you found that? Yeah, uh, you and I were talking about this before we right. hit record, just mm -hmm. the need for this type of healing modality, these modalities, those subtle energy modalities, yeah. the modalities that yeah. you're so versed in is higher now than ever before uh, yeah. on the planet, just with everybody's state of being and exactly. that inner and outer state that's going yes. on and kind of that incoherence of the inner yeah. and outer states. And so that's one of the things I think that have brought you and I together. Yeah. Um, and, and another reason why I just love everything that you're doing in all those realms and why I wanted to share that with yeah, everybody, but fantastic. also share your journey with others because of that inspiration right. that exudes when you share your story. Um, with all your speaking, I did, I was just curious and I put that in the question before. Is there, are there any kind of... Um, memories that pop out from all your various speaking engagements from all over the world oh, uh, wow. something yes. that might have happened that, that just yes. comes to your mind like oh my gosh at this event we did this or that it's just fun things to share that way yeah i was in uh new zealand and this woman could barely talk uh she was uh danish and she was from a big danish family where uh where everybody was a singer. Her father in particular had a big, booming, gorgeous voice, but the girls, especially her, were silenced. He was the king on the block and they, he would not allow any of his daughters, especially this woman, to sing. So she uh, had, a, under her tongue, the anterior digastricus muscle here, she had a tightness in this muscle that goes back to the posterior, the anterior. So I said, look, uh, I'm going to put a finger cut on. I'm going to go into that area. Raise your hand if you want me out. It's clean. And we're going to open up this sound. And as we're doing this, I'm going to sound no words, 
you're going to sound ah or whatever, and we're going to go in there. I'm going to release that. And uh, people thought we were crazy. You know, like, what the <laughs> hell? She's going, ah, and I'm doing, ah, you know, and I'm down here releasing her tongue because she was tongue tied, literally. So uh, it took a while. By that time, the New Zealanders were really thinking, well, they've lost, their, they're having a whiff here. This is really weird. But finally, when I felt it released, uh, she started to cry. Wow. And she cried and cried and cried of relief. And then she stood up and she said to me, I think I can sing now. And she let out this huge, gorgeous, beautiful sound. She had a voice. And I said, you have a voice. And she said, yes, I do. I said, are you going to sing? She said, yes, to heck with my father. I'm not going to follow that. We met her a year later in, in uh, New Zealand and she was a heavy, chunky girl holding a lot of her frustration and energy in her body and her cellular. Uh, anyway, she, she had lost 20, 30 pounds. She looked gorgeous. She could sing. Her voice was clear and she said, I'm taking you to dinner. Thank oh. you. So I that I would highly recommend learning how to do this. We did this recently at a woman at uh, Eastern School in New Jersey. And I looked at her and I felt her ran 22. I said, you've been silenced. This is another beautiful big girl. She said, yes. I said, let's let's open that up. Meanwhile, the rest of them were a funky bunk. So they, they bunched, they didn't worry about it. She opened it up. Wow. So uh, that's one of the things that I figured out. I figured that out many years ago. I figured you've got to open up under the tongue because it's very important for people to get into the throat chakra, especially women. Yeah. It's mainly women that are, not all of them, the men too, mm -hmm. are closed. So yes, that was astounding. All of them. I love it. It was a How about with the what about with the tuning forks? Uh, any yes. stories come to mind of profound healing, instantaneous healing with tuning forks or your work with yeah, I use that energy. The tuning fork also with this tongue under the under the the tongue, and I put my finger in and released it, and I use the tuning fork depending upon what we are using. Uh Tuning for, oh God, yes. I've had people, especially when you're working with the, the right and left brain, uh, either they're, 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 uh, their right and left brain is off. One is linear, one is nonlinear. They can't get out of their head. By listening to the tuning forks using the corpus callosum point and the tragus cartilage on the opposite side and the, the byway, uh, and then you go back and you balance, they immediately come into a place of peace and grounding. Uh, you, you also reminded me of somebody. Oh, God. There are a lot of stories. I should write down these stories. Uh, uh, oh, a woman came here, and it was all tuning forks. She came from Montreal. And uh, we were using a little bit needles, but mainly tuning forks. And she, on her left side, was having kidney pains, kidney stone mm -hmm. pains. I said, do you have a kidney stone? She said, uh, uh, I think so. And it, it's really painful. So what I did was use the tuning fork over. Now, the tuning forks can uh, has a little, you can unscrew the bottom and it's it's hollow, as you know. Yep. So yep. I, put, I put a metal needle at kidney three, which is the very important kidney point on that yep. same, same side as the as the uh, problem with the kidney stone. She, uh, I put that vibration alone, low ohm over that metal needle and let it vibrate. And she let it go. Wow. She let it go. And so then I, I left it there for a minute. Then I took it off. It was a mentorship here in New York. Mm -hmm. And I took, I took that uh, fork off and inside the fork, which is hollow, there was, I still kept it. There is a, a some sort of wound metal in there that was not in the tuning fork, nor was it have anything to do with 
the needle. We still don't know where that came from. It was, I still have it. It's metal that came out of the tube and there was nothing in it. I always check. And she said, I feel like I can pass this kidney stone now. She went home and she passed the stone and she was fine. She went back to Montreal. Wow. Wow. Now that's, that was a mentorship, uh, a small mentorship from people from all over the world in New York not so yeah. long ago, we're going to do yeah. that again. Because those small mentorships, you could really get at it with people. You yeah. can really go to deep places rather than a humongous class. You need a lot of assistance, as you know. But when yeah. that, yes, and I, it, I, I want it at some point in time. Do you want to share anything that's incredible that happened when you were teaching? I'm sure a lot, or working oh, with people, uh, lots oh, of things. Oh yeah, you know, like, I, like you as well, but not nearly as many of the stories. Just, you know, uh, memorable moments yeah. when I'm speaking, even the ones where you're, I, re, I remember, um, I want to bring it back to Lillian Bridges. Um, oh, yes. She was the very first presenter I ever saw. My very first symposium, oh. my very first, um, um, I guess, module was Lillian Bridges. And I just remember being oh. mesmerized by her. And, oh. and what just year was to that? Myself, Do you remember? It was 2001, what, yeah. maybe? 2001, okay. 2002. Okay. I probably and was there. Just, just thinking, oh my oh. gosh, so amazing. You were there and you were, I was, I also came and saw you and I felt the same yeah. reverence. And yeah, so I just remember thinking, oh, boy, if, if I ever could be like her, if I could ever be like Mary Elizabeth Wakefield. Oh. So I remember the very first time I was invited to speak at symposium and there's that little sense of imposter syndrome, like, but I'm not Mary Elizabeth Wakefield, not even close. You're, and I'm not like, Lily you're Lewis yourself, in, you're yourself. Well, I'm oh, myself. Like the reason why I share this is because there, I'm pretty sure somebody listening right now has gifts to share with the world and they're stopping themselves because they look around and say, well, I'm not this person. I'm not that uh -huh. person. And they're, and they're not just doing it. Like we all feel like that. We all have moments of great success and moments that are seemingly failures, yeah. but those seemingly failures or what looks like a failure is a gift to help grow us mature us and make us better at our gift at our craft and sharing and so that being said i'm curious like um what advice would you give uh -huh. a that emerging physicians yeah yeah I'm you know to... you know yeah well what, what you comes... wish you knew back then that you now right. know uh don't list listen to western medicine <laughs> <laughs> that's one of them that's not the uh uh be all of everything uh follow the follow the Chinese way as much as possible. Follow your your medicine. Be aware, honor uh, Western medicine, but please, it, it isn't the be all and end all. And uh, and also to, to find your path, you have to follow your heart. As you said before, listen to yourself. Reach inside and find that that heart that you have, that that groundedness of, of being, that that feeling of of being joyful and alive and present. Being, I think, present uh, and peaceful when you're working with yourself and people. I've found a lot of peace with people uh, since I've gotten a bit older. I feel that the ability to be with them, be non-judgmental, to ground them, get them in their bodies as much as possible. I use sound, I use everything. Uh, and. Uh, and allow them their moments of, of some of them are very intuitive and, and uh, they see ghosts that scares the hoo-ha out of them. There's a, I said, you're very gifted. Remember that, uh, that ghost pressing on your chest and it's, uh, it's kidney 24. It is a spirit burial ground. And yeah. one of these patients recently, uh, her, uh, 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 somebody down below her had died and it, uh, she was above above the, the next story and she woke up in the night and she felt a, a ghost pressing on her chest and I said did somebody die near you she very intuitive she said yes last week and I said okay that's what this is you are an intuitive and please open to that and ground you but that's that's good that you were able to feel that happening. She said, I couldn't breathe. 
I said, no, yeah. they, they say you can't breathe. Yeah. I said, how does it feel to be a gifted intuitive? She said, difficult. <laughs> so, but, uh, but that, yes, yes, that whole idea of listening to yourself, listening to your patient, um, um, yeah, using, using the vibration is very powerful. So if you have not worked with tuning forks, I recommend it. And you can integrate, integrate uh, gems, uh, uh, memorable moments. Yeah. Uh, I just want to say, uh, you know, this is a transformative voyage that we're on here. And it is, it is, has to do with Chinese uh, medicine. It is an ancient wisdom. It goes way back. We know that. And I can't get enough of knowing about that. And it, it goes way back to that ancient wisdom. And we are carriers of this in a positive way of this wisdom. And so it's being kind to oneself is very important. Taking care of oneself, eating well, and, being, and, and not being afraid. Not being afraid. I have people come in who are perfectly healthy. And some of them, of course, because of what's happened, are afraid they're going to get sick. And I said, look, yeah. take a Matsumoto point. We're going to take a right here on the elbow, a large intestine, you know, 18, blah, 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 right here. And we know where that is. I have these little, from LifeWave, I have these little um, peptide. Uh, and I'm going to put that right on your immune point. Mm -hmm. And whether it works or not, it works. <laughs> yep and yep. they go home and they aren't as afraid just take yeah. care of yourself yeah. yeah take your walks eat well and they're they don't seem to be afraid of me i'm okay i guess i'm sterile enough i don't know <laughs> but <laughs> i'm sorry but but i said this is a trans transformational voyage whatever happens uh, anyway that's i guess the whole idea of that passion to create the cap yeah, yeah for ourselves as well as helping others. And, and when I say career, I mean, write a book. I mean, sing, uh, not to sell myself out to Western medicine. Yes, I if I need surgery, yes, but I don't need those, those things. I don't, and none of my patients do. And that's their choice. But what I'm saying is make your choices. Don't be afraid, you know, open your heart and, um, and you'll find You'll find inside that heart that joy and that beauty and who we really, who you really are, who I really am, and that's yeah. an ongoing work of art, mm -hmm. uh, I think. And you, you too, yes. Oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It, it's it's ever going, and that's why I love your journey because it shows how your many gifts have woven together and continue to weave together into a beautiful patch or quilt or oh, I love just that. an entire picture, right? Because you have the background of opera and singing and performance, found your way to Chinese medicine. And a lot of people will say, well, gosh, how do I marry those two worlds? They're so opposite, entertainment and Chinese medicine and healing. And you have found a way to do that. You are representative of a way to marry the past life with the present life and the is future that a, life. Is that with two hours or one hour, Mary? I'm sorry. <laughs> Mary, if I right. Raise it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like Continue. Bring, it to, bring it together. You know, in, in my, like we talked about earlier, most of my work right now is supporting practitioners. Good. The practitioners that are out there holding the space for all the patients often are alone, feel alone, don't have uh -huh. somebody to hold a space for them and, or have somebody that really gets them. So that's yeah. been me for a number of years. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them come to me with this kind of dilemma of, well, before acupuncture, I did this. And now that I'm in Chinese medicine and a healer, I do this. I don't know how to bring the two together. And uh -huh. I believe that there are no, there's, um, it's not a coincidence. coincidence. There's a reason why your past life had the sound or the opera, you know, in mm -hmm. your case, it was for you. And you just said it, that we are all um, sharing. We are now the people that are sharing ancient 
wisdom of East Asian mm. medicine with the world. Mm -hmm. And the way we do it is our own flavor, our own mm -hmm. style, our own color of it based on what we did before or our influences before. So mm -hmm. you share the ancient wisdom of East Asian medicine with mm -hmm. sound vibration mm -hmm. and it's just so beautiful. I love that. And I want anybody listening to know that it is possible to bring those two worlds together and move ah. forward and share with the world. You may be the bridge. You like, if you're from the corporate world, you may think well, mm -hmm. corporate world and healing. So opposite, not so much because corporations are like entities. They need healing as well. They need cohesiveness. That's right. They have all the five elements in them. Every mm -hmm. corporation has mm -hmm. the five elements. They have the imbalance of the five elements. You can come in and heal a corporation and be the bridge because you speak their language. Have you done you know that? How, have you done I it? mean, no, I, I have the corporate background. Like one of the things oh, is my undergrad, my undergrad was in business. Mm -hmm. And so I learned business. Even as a child, I had little lemonade stands. I always <laughs> had a little business going since I was Love like it. six years old. I had little businesses. Yeah. So I know that that's something within me. And so uh, it just comes natural. And so even though my life took me into healing and Chinese medicine in the late 90s, Mm -hmm. I have found a way to weave those together and help other practitioners with their business Good. because that's Good. something they don't enjoy. And so uh -huh. I can make that part of their life easier. Wonderful. I come in, I show them how to do the business so they can do what they do, which is healing. So you do that as well. You've, you've brought all those beautiful things together. And uh, the other thing is with all these gems pun intended, oh. <laughs> that you have pulled from your journey, it, it really is such a whole being approach to a person's mm. life. You it's also. not just, it's not just physical mm -hmm. and uh -huh. it's not just constitutional. You mm -hmm. now are bringing together the spiritual level to the healing as well with vibrational yeah. um, medicine, vibrational, um, mm -hmm. your vibrational acupuncture book and your teachings and just the way you are. Thank you. you. I'm looking that. at this. God gave you gifts. I keep looking at that. <laughs> yeah. It's lovely. So uh, speaking of gifts and doing something, let's, let's do a book. Let's okay. Let's so just con conjure up some ideas. I'll, I'll conjure up some ideas and, and uh, that uh, we've got the connections and I'll look for those gems for you that I said I have and see yeah. what I can do. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I think it's amazing that you're working with people in the business world and you're working outside certain, per I mean, you're working on that level and touching people Thank at that you. deep level who really need he he healing. Yeah. A lot of yeah, healing, help, support. Yeah. What do you, uh, what do you, so what, so we talked a lot about what brought you here to this yeah. moment? Mm -hmm. And thank you for sharing all of that. Mm -hmm. What What's going on? I know that as things are opening up, you are doing a lot more speaking this year. This is 2023, yes. promoting yeah. your book more. It launched yeah. during COVID. So mm -hmm. it's more of like a relaunch of vibration. What are you going to be doing this year? <laughs> oh, I think I, uh, uh, teaching a lot. <laughs> yeah, I think I told you, uh, um, teaching in Orlando, you're mm -hmm. welcome, welcome to enjoy, uh, to join us. We're doing constitutional facial acupuncture. By the way, I've created about 22, 23 different, uh, protocols, uh, for wow. working with the face and the body. Um, it's called sparking the shin, Ooh. which is beautiful. That is in March. I'll send you all these dates and send me your yes, dates. Yes, please. Too. That's awesome. Or Orlando. Then we're going to be, as I said, in May, we'll be in Boulder, Colorado doing the new protocols, the constitution, they haven't had that before. I'm planning to, uh, in August to attend the Orlando symposium. This is, uh, out of Florida, F Soma mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. fantastic. I'm going to be in at Yosan university. That's not too mm. far away from you. Right. No. Yeah. yeah. When are you, you going to be there? Uh, August 18th, 19th, 20th. I'll okay. send you all this stuff. And it okay. would be great to have you come and work with me. I would love it. Okay. I, I mean, let it. me look at my calendar. I, if I can come up got. there, I will. I'm not too far yeah. from San, uh, Los Angeles. Yeah, if you can. And then uh, 
then October will be uh, in the Eastern School in New Jersey. And it, it was that was one of the, the people who found their voice with the, releasing uh, the tongue. A big, big girl, a different one. And she stood up and cried. And then the next day she came in and she was open and joyful. She found her voice. So it's, yeah. So, yeah. And right now that's what's happening. And uh, then there will be online things again. And we'll get you those dates, et cetera, and what we're going to do for you. And I know you. you're going to do some online with me. I'm super yeah, thrilled that's about what I'm talking that. About. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so you still practice. You have your practice yes. in New York. Yes. Out of, between the two, teaching and practice, do you have a favorite <laughs> or is that hard <laughs> to ask? Like which child is your favorite? Probably hard for you to say one is I'm your a favorite. Per- I'm a performer. <laughs> uh, you're right, going way back. Um, I love working with my patients. Extremely tiring. Yeah. Not always, but joyful. Yeah. And, and, uh, and the ahas that happen. I adore teaching and writing yeah. Yeah. and singing. I love working with the patients. They need to be there. Yeah. yeah. And it's a, a gift for me because I'm not a, forgive me, I'm not always a patient person, <laughs> but I, I, not always, but I have a lot of compassion. So what about you? What's, what's your favorite? Oh gosh. Um, I, you All know, when them? you were saying that, when you were saying that, I felt like um, I really resonated with that. I love one-on-one. I really do mm-hmm. because I you do can too. have such an impact in that connection. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I also love the feeling of inspiring and motivating a group. I just love Mm -hmm. that feeling. It really energizes me. Um, so it's hard for me to say, I I wouldn't want to just pick one Avenue. I'd like to have that. All of that. uh, Yeah. Potluck of being able to, you know, the variety of that. Well, and, um, yeah, so I like that, but I do like being out in a big group and helping to motivate that. Um, so I, I want to ask a, a one more, a couple more sure. questions, maybe if yeah. it's okay. And That's that fine. is what, what are you, what really excites you? So you, you shared that you love, yeah. you adore the yeah. uh, teaching and educating. Yeah. Um, is there another area of interest that's new for you right now that you're kind of dabbling with exploring um, any kind of subject or topic that you're looking into lately? Uh, yeah, it's not quite come up to the surface yet. First of all, a book, another book, and uh, we can talk about that. Um, my partner, Michelangelo and I are very good writers and I know you are too. Uh, and also we're going to take our new vibrational book that never got baptized, so to speak. And we're going (laughs) down to a big uh, downtown, um, in, uh, in New York, uh, uh, you know, where that where all the um, the um, what what can I say all of the big uh, uh, needles and places you know there's a place that we were supposed to and I inaugurate this sorry I just got stuck there yeah uh, uh, yeah we're gonna go down there and see if we can talk and and bring the vibrational book out uh, finally because it just was dead in the water in 2020 when it came yeah. out so we're yeah. gonna we're going to do that. Um, and, but I think, I think collaborating and, and, and reaching out to people, there's, I've written a lot about what people have gone through and mm. uh, not, and not so much the patients, uh, that's, uh, that, but other people also around, around me and uh, what, what is happening and where people are. And it just keeps coming. I, I'm just going to start writing and putting that down because there is a lot of wounding still there. And um, yeah, yeah, and it's interesting because I talked to a very, I went to acupuncture school at Tri-State with her a dear friend, uh, another lever like me. And she, we were talking yesterday and she said, look, uh, look, uh, people are still in a fog. A lot of people are still in a fog and they don't know what's going on. Mm-hmm. And uh, without going into she said people need to have that hope of uh, getting out mm-hmm. of the fog. But more than that, uh, she talked to me. She said, did you know that, that, and this had to do with the tuning forks. Um, I think I'm going to talk about this one to, to you pri- privately. 
Okay, you got okay. it. Okay, you got it. I will do it. Yeah, that. yeah. I will do that. Yeah. Okay. I was just curious. I mean, I know you're always looking into interesting things and growing yeah. and, and expanding yeah. yourself. And so I was trying to get a sneak peek into what might be next. It sounds like yeah. this year, let's, let's finally, I love it. Let's baptize vibrational acupuncture. Thank you. It never you. really got its I chance love that. to get no, out. I, so. <laughs> I love that. I love get it that. out there. Yeah. Vibrational acupuncture. Okay. I'll, I will use your words. I say these are East's words. We're going <laughs> to baptize vibrational acupuncture. I think it's a great idea. Um, mm -hmm. What about you? Are you sitting on a few projects? I do. I have some projects. We'll talk about that privately. Okay, and anybody listening, you're just going to have to follow us, my friends, because there is That's right. our projects are not ready to be public. But yeah. just know that the two of us yeah. are aligned mm -hmm. in wanting to up level the frequency of everybody around us, mm -hmm. our communities, ultimately the planet and be of service. Absolutely. And I know we, we both want to do that. We both want to bring the divine here onto the planet. Yeah. And the divine um, feminine in particular. The divine as, feminine. As well yes. as the masculine. Yeah. 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 And just uh, be here to support you. I wanted to share with anybody that listens to this video, this beautiful woman that's in front of you right now, mm -hmm. uh, inside and out, Mary Elizabeth Wakefield has been a light for me, a mentor for me, somebody who has inspired and motivated me. And I wanted to share that with you instead of keeping it all to myself. And hopefully something that either of us have said, especially Mary Elizabeth Wakefield. Oh, both has, of us. Yes. Yeah. Has given you an aha moment or just a little bit more insight, inspiration, encouragement, motivation mm -hmm. to keep doing what you're doing and keep mm -hmm. sharing your gifts with the That's world. Right. I think, you know, Hallelujah. and I feel like I also want to honor and say again, Lillian Bridges. Oh, Lillian yes. Bridges was the very yes. first presenter I ever oh. watched. And guess what? Yeah. She, let me see if I can find it. She, uh, this is the book I wrote. And guess who Let's endorsed my book? The very first person oh, who endorsed lovely. my book, Lillian, Lillian. Bridges, of right here, it is. Yeah. right? Yeah. And so I'm also bringing this up in closing because there's no coincidences in the world. Mm -hmm. You opened with discussing Mar uh, Lillian. Lillian Bridges. Yep. She's almost like a little common thread between yep. you and I. Mm -hmm. And those are little clues from the divine, from God, that you're on your path. Mm -hmm. You and I are on our path. Mm -hmm. And we want more people to be on their path, to have mm -hmm. that feeling that they're aligned with their calling and their purpose. Mm -hmm. I know with every fiber of my being, Mary Elizabeth Wakefield, you are aligned with your calling and your purpose. In As are world. you. And it's a beautiful thing. And I hope that by us talking about it, infects other people to get in line with their calling mm -hmm. and their purpose to get out in the world and share that because the world okay. so desperately needs it right now. Uh, yeah, exactly. I agree with you, my dear. And I thank you so much for having this podcast. And, and yes, we started with Lillian and we are finishing temporarily with Lillian. God bless you, Lillian. I feel God bless here. you. Thank you and, for your contributions as well. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So uh, would you like, uh, are we? Are we ready to say sayonara? Or, We're going to oh, say oh, oh. Uh, until we meet again, because I so, feel like you and I will have more to share this year. So stay exactly. tuned, everybody. Yes. Uh, more to come. More to exactly. come. Exactly. More to come. Thank you so much. <laughs> have I a wonderful love day. Bye-bye. Happy Bye. New Year. Happy New Year to you. Blessings. Blessings. Bye. Blessings. Bye, my sweet.